Hey gang, Spada here, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Deluxe Class, Dark of the Moon, Roadbuster. Now, Roadbuster is an, the 88 AMP NASCAR vehicle. I don't watch NASCAR, so I don't know really anything about it. Um, not sure what the significance of this would be, but hey, it, it's a pretty nifty little car. Comes with a mech tech weapon, and it is a blaster, and then you pull the switch, and it is a chainsaw. Unfortunately, like all the mech tech weapons, it goes instantly back to its original form, and I wish there was a way to lock it into place, because having this little chainsaw thing is actually pretty cool. I really kind of dig the chainsaw. Now, you can attach this in one of three places, on, on any of the 88s. Something that I didn't know before is that this actually depresses. There's a button here that depresses when you plug it in so there you don't have a gaping hole opening up so we just put it there and yeah, looks pretty cool so transformation for this guy is kind of simple actually I was pretty surprised take the rear of the vehicle and pop it up now this is where the uh, missiles and weapons are stored in robot mode unfortunately getting this to unfold is a little bit of a pain, but you can unfold this whole rear section and kind of give him extra missiles or an extra missile mode, which is pretty cool. It's not the uh, it's not the crazy guns that you get it, that we're gonna get in the movie, but it's something. So uh, we're gonna fold that down. Then we are going to come under here and fold these. You're supposed to fold these flaps up according to the directions, but don't do that. Grab this whole section and pull it out like that. Then we can come back here and pull off the sides of the vehicle. And move them up into place. Next we'll grab the this section and take the front tires. Actually, we'll do that a little later. Take this whole front section and you're supposed to pull it, but what I like to do is get my fingers here underneath the front of the vehicle and push on the A and the P and pop that out of place. And then rotate that and rotate that 80 degrees and just sandwich it up. There and then that plugs in there. And then this, fold the hood down and fold, collapse it into the main body. Then we take the front what were the front tires and rotate them down to give them figure some more articulation space. And we fiddle with the camera. And then we just uh, get everything in order. Fold those in, fold the chest pieces in, open up these rear patches so that you have more articulation on the arms and try not to break anything and rotate the head around and then we just fold out the feet and here we have broadside now broadside is one of the wreckers as we are as we knew no and i'm just getting some better lighting here his um his head sculpt is a little weird not gonna lie about that it's um Looks rather rednecky. He looks like he's got a where he's got a mullet on a baseball cap. Ugh, a little weird, but I wait to see how he shows up in the movie proper. So we will see about that. Oh, and these panels I was talking about earlier, just fold them up. And for the mech tech gimmick, we can plug that in on either the right or the left arm. One thing that I do like is they include, when you push it in, these little bits pop, push out, and then you could just push that to pull the firearm out. So, um, I actually like this figure quite a bit. Uh, he does have the little pegs here so that anything from any of the weapons from the Human Alliance can just peg right in. That's a very nice touch. I really like the missile rack on his back. I think that's a nice touch. My only... I have two nagging problems. One, the figure is top-heavy. 
Actually, three nanny problems, sorry. The figure is top-heavy. There's nothing I can do about that. I mean, you've got all this stuff here. It's just top-heavy. The other issue I have is that there is a peg right there. It's a clear blue peg. Not sure well you can see it. It's a very small peg. It's a very loose peg because this whole section comes off really easily. That um, That's just an engineering issue. The other issue I have with the figure is... I really, really want some better paint scheme for this guy. Uh, the silver on the face is really nice, but I'd like to see some more silver throughout the rest of the figure. Maybe on the arms or the legs or even this weird fan thing he's got in his chest. That would have been awesome. So I might actually paint that myself. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff here that really could do with some painting. I mean, you could get some really neat effects here on the legs. You have some black for these cross hatches and then silver on the inside. I mean, you could get some really good good color schemes going. I really don't like the fact that the green and white isn't carried into the robot mode. I really wish that was carried in, but you know, I can understand why Hasbro didn't um, just budget and what all. So, uh, posability, head, head is on a ball joint but is somewhat limited. Arms are on uh, these rat these ratcheting joints for the shoulders, and then for the inner shoulders and the outer shoulders are on a ball joint. Hinge joint uh, bends almost 90 degrees at the, at the arm. Leg hip joint is a ball joint. Foot is a just a turning joint for the transformation, and then roughly 90 degrees at the knees. So not as much posability as I would like, but hey, it's not that bad. Uh, I actually am very happy with this figure. Like I said, I just wish there were some more paint schemes. So, is he worth picking up? Yeah, I would definitely say this is one worth picking up. If he's going to be in the movie, this is a solid deluxe class figure. Like I said, just wish there was more paint schemes, but overall, he's a solid, solid toy.